Welcome to PartialArc.com. <laughs> Don't do that. Previously, on Friday Night Quests, our heroes warned the people of Matet about a grave wind, protecting most of them from the danger. However, the Moist Boys did witness strange sights in the storm, and now they must reckon with the aftermath. The grave wind fades almost as quickly as it arrived, and before too long, the skies above Matet are a little gray, a little cloudy, but there's some sunlight. The horrible wind, the horrible rain, and the turbulent clouds have vanished. They don't seem to have drifted away, they simply dissolved. There's this eerie silence in the city. The undead that were in front of Althea have been swept away in the rain, though you hear some other commotion in other streets. It sounds like not everything that came in through the Gravewind has completely left the city, but it's sort of an echoing silence as peace is beginning to descend. How long did the Gravewind last? Mm -hmm. A little over an hour, almost two. Okay. Oh, that's not very long at all. In the house with you, you have Sir Bjorn Bay, uh, the unconscious form of Octavia the spy. Um, Jabstein, the strange man, is there. Uh, Barry, the bear, Gregory the owl are with you. We have the unconscious... Um... Oh, and oh, yes, yeah. thank you. And the unconscious form of Aldo Bay is Oh my god. Did they not take him away? Did we uh, him somebody? No, you didn't. Oh, you, okay. We're going to bring him to Bjorn. Yes. Mm. Bjorn's here now. But Bjorn is here now. <laughs> you did leave uh, Yosef... Uh, Clarence and Bree Yosef. at the, uh, I think it was the Bay House. Oh, I'm worried about that one. Oh, Joseph Did they Clarence. get Clarence? Is he <laughs> still Clarence. around? Uh, Is this Clarence's terrible backstory? So where it all turns are, around. Are we like, what's the condition of the structure we're in? It's a little beat up, but it's in pretty good shape. You're in Lady Thorne's house, but she's not home. None of her servants are oh, home. Okay. And it's, you know, it, it seems like it survived a storm. The windows are a little cracked, but... Other than that, it's in pretty good shape. There is a lot of debris in the street. Like, there's a whole castle tower that just dropped into the streets. There's another building that just vanished. So there's some distress. The house that you're in seems to have made it out all right. And the castle tower is not like a castle from here. This no. looks like a it's uh-huh. like a black it's, castle. It's right? black stone, and everything in Matet is wood. So. Well, I'm gonna like get up and like creak open the door because I'm sure the door is closed, and I want to see all of this stuff that like his happened and all Mm -hmm. of the debris yeah you look around you see just like riding around a corner just a donkey that is wearing like this old tattered uh make a history check for me okay oh an old tattered history check an old old tattered tattered history history check i took an Uh, honors course in tatters oh i forgot (laughs) i'm a negative two on history zero (laughs) yeah It, it is wearing an old tattered banner from someplace that is not matet and just sort of like runs around the corner. Okay. I want to go to the donkey. <laughs> okay. It's sort of, it's like down, it's like 100 feet away. Go and it rounded the, the corner. Okay. It will know. <laughs> Actually, I get make my way up to the donkey and then remember I don't have speak with animals, so I turn back around. <laughs> what if you no. turn into a donkey? Wait, if you're turned into a donkey, can you speak donkey? Donkey doesn't have a language. I know this. But can you, like, try to communicate? I mean, technically it does, because speak with animals exists in D&D. Yeah. So they must communicate in some form or fashion. That's a fun DM question. What do you say, Mike? Because then if she is a donkey, but she doesn't speak donkey, but she's trying to speak normal words and she speaks donkey, can she understand it back? Can I, I go know. talk to this ass? <laughs> talk to that ass. What do you guys want to do as you are here in the aftermath of the storm well is the castle tower like in the street in front of us or yeah it's just across the street it it fell at an angle so it like broke apart when it hit the stone i want to 
go over and inspect it. Okay. Yeah. Make an investigation or history check. I, I also They're think we need to secure Aldo, make sure he is not in yeah, any position to so escape. Fucking one. <laughs> uh, you can't discern anything from what this tower was or wasn't. Can I, can I inspect the tower? Sure. What's the best kind of check for this? A investigation or history. Anyone else who wants to get in on this, do so now. I'm 100% staying by Aldo and it's either going to try to f- figure out a way to tie him up or I'm motioning like we need to make sure he's secure. That was almost a natural 20. Aww. Same with me. I got a 13. Uh, what'd you say? Investigation or history? Probably not history because as Ivy, I don't really have a history. Probably wouldn't apply to you. Um, Investigation. That is a solid two. Okay. Uh, Phineas, it seems like this tower <laughs> is very, very old. Mm. Um, it was old before it fell apart when it hit the ground. It was also empty. There was no one inside. Hmm. Okay. Old tower. How old? Knock, knock, knock. <laughs> no, it, it it's fell on its side. sideways and fell apart into pieces. <laughs> I'm just having fun with the tower. Is there any like uh, debris that fell out of the tower? No. That he, that he can knock on? Does he knock on the one piece of debris Well, that there's fell? a banner on the side of it, right? <laughs> you said there's a tied banner to it? That was on the donkey. Oh, that's on the donkey. Never mind. There's one windowsill that's just in the middle of the debris, and Phineas knocks on that. <laughs> yes. Have fun. I, I break open the windowsill. I punch it. <laughs> okay. There's it's, just, it's, it's glass, right? No, it's just a wooden window. Oh, it's window wooden. Oh, it was an antique. Shutter. It's a shutter. Sorry. Oh, well, but, I'm sure you can just open it. Yeah. Is there anything to climb into? It's No. <laughs> It's the oh. tower fell over and a, broke into pieces. It's a pile of stone. <laughs> yeah. One more time, Mike. Is there anything <laughs> now, special Mike, about the tower? How do I rifle through this tower's pockets? <laughs> you tell me where I need to go. The right. tower like, is dead. Can we resurrect it? I would like to make this tower my home, please. <laughs> All right, roll a d100 for the number of wizards in this tower. <laughs> it's made, of, but it's made of dead ground, Ivy. So just like I'm rolling a d100 because I, I know it was a joke, but I take everything seriously. Oh no, as Amanda. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's a 26. There are 26 wizards inside. You have to find them now. That's your let's, new quest. Whoa, <laughs> this is the show. They're, the quest for the 26 wizards. They're really small. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of wizards. <laughs> Quattro, Hi, I'm wizard number one. Yes. Quattro, you're able to tie up all the... There's like curtains and things in the room you can okay. use for that. Yeah, I'm going to go back to... Obviously, there's nothing at this tower, so I'm going to go back to speak to Bjorn. Okay. Um, and I think you've probably filled in Bjorn a little bit. Yeah, I you've imagine. you caught him up. Yeah. So he's just sort of... We have to take him to the Baron. That sounds about right. And you guys tie up Aldo. I, I have a question. Yeah. How is Aldo as a person? I mean, bad. No, he's I'm, a bad person. But I mean, like, before now, like, you seem sad that he's like this. Were you friends? Were you close? They're family. <laughs> no, no, not just, I mean. He is my brother. That can mean a lot of things. Yes. Yes, oh. it can. And he just takes Aldo and just hugs him over his shoulder and. Walks out the door. What is that supposed to be? I think I'm missing something. <laughs> I know I miss most things, but I think in this particular situation, I'm definitely missing something. Not all family are allies. Okay. I follow Bjorn. Okay. Phineas oh. is still, like, kind of hovering around Jabstein. What is he doing? What is Jabstein, like, up to at this point? Jabstein's sort of just, like, looking around. Like, he walks out into the street to follow, but he's sort of just looking around, trying to get his bearings, essentially. So, um, hmm? do, do you have a second? Uh, I've, I, got, I've got, like, a lot, I've got a lot I, of questions. I, I suppose. Um, question number one. How did you get here? I, I don't know. What do you mean? I was in the hells. I, 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 the last thing I remember. You went to the hells? That's where you went. I was looking for... It doesn't matter. Are you guys coming or not? Well, uh, hold on. Uh, Jabstein, um, do, you know how to get, do you know how to get back? Do you know how to get back to where you were from? I need to find someone who can get me there. But like, I, don't, I don't even know where I am. Oh, I, I can catch you up. And I do catch him up <laughs> okay. as we're walking back. All inside. your friends are dead. <laughs> Push me to the... <laughs> um, yeah, he even doesn't even know like if he's north, south, west, east of the Kemp Estates. So you I have, give him a full geography rundown. I okay. give him the cultural, uh, you know, touchstones of this area. That's a lot for him to digest because, <laughs> like, not only has culturally things have changed, like an elven empire has risen up and annexed a lot of the territory between 
the Kemp's area and Matet, but geographically, a lot has changed. Mm -hmm. Like, there are mountain ranges that were not there before. So, when you say, like, oh, it's north of these mountains, he's like, there are no mountains there. That's a swamp, and you have to, like, reorient for, like, the collapse and 91 years of change. So Yeah, how does he take that 91 years of change? <laughs> not awesome um he's he's having a really hard time processing what's going on because for him it's probably more like 95 years or some change he for him it's been about like six months since he last saw like his family Hmm. rough yep um you make your way through the ruins of the noble quarter and, and some of it's okay and some of it is pretty wrecked and up to the palace of peace uh the doors are shut there are no guards outside I mean, I imagine that it would. We would expect there would be no guards because everyone would have to go inside. It's also the town is pretty messed up, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. After the grapevine. Yeah, as you're actually now at the top of the hill, essentially this artificial hill that is Mated, you look down and you see, like buildings are missing. Some buildings have caved in. Um, you see, like just like a bunch of like uh, dwarves in armor just like run around a corner, like just looking around trying to figure out where they are, like several wards away from you, but. Oh, okay. Mm. Like not looking like Matet type people? No, they, they're they like in centurion armor. They're oh. in armor that's like oh. hundreds of years old, so. How many of like that do we see as we're walking? Like, is that like a common occurrence? Like- no, I mean, you're, you're more seeing like the after effects. There okay. are a few that seem to be still in like the wards you were not in. So most everything was taken with the grave one. There weren't like a lot of stuff left behind. From what you can tell. Okay. Um, I knock on the door. Okay. Yeah. Um, after a few long moments, the door opens and Valeria is actually standing there. Oh, hey. I hug her. Oh, you're, you're alive. You're all alive. What the fuck? You're alive. Yeah, what the fuck indeed. And sort of looks at Aldo slung over Bay's shoulder, or over Bjorn's shoulder, rather. Okay. Um, we have a lot to talk about, I guess. Mm-hmm. And brings you inside and deeper into the Palace of Peace. And you see, like, the windows are shattered, um, but more or less there's not a ton of damage in this area because there's, like, wooden shutters over a lot of the windows. Uh, you actually see at one point there is, like, uh, three or four zombies that are like dead and cut apart in pieces on like the foyer of the palace. So mm. some things did try to get in here. Oh my. But without Zombie. a focused effort of leadership from Aldo, it was more of a random attack. It was a hodgepodge. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Jabstein's the Kemp guy, right? That's mm-hmm. his, okay. How's he looking? Does he need any healing or anything? He's physically fine. Okay. Yeah. You make your way deeper in and there's some antechambers you go into and you go pass through a room that is like a sitting room essentially and it's full of servants um and they're sort of just huddled amongst each other just talking and there's some guards in here as well a few soldiers of the bay house but a fair number mostly are um are dunhouse and they look up and they're like kind of immediately start asking you questions what's going on what's happening out there is it you know have you seen so and so have you seen this and and they they're just trying to figure out what happened um but the storm is gone now and Valeria is sort of gesturing for you all to follow and and brings you deeper into the next room. As they come to me, I just keep druid crafting a flower for them. Flower for you, flower for you. <laughs> um, and people start following you and like, they stop asking questions and they just sort of start following in your wake. I'll continue to divvy out flowers. Okay. Following anyone specifically? Or? Make an insight roll. Okay. Who can I? Yeah, yeah, all of you can make an insight roll. Seven. Five. 17. 17. Yeah, both of you recognize they seem to be following the four of you, mainly. Seems like the servants knew, or at least have heard something about your mission, what you were sent to do, and are very interested. They're also a little surprised to see Bjorn with you. They thought he was somewhere else, so there's a lot of confusion, but there definitely is some reverence. Do they also know Old Bay? They know a little bit. They know enough to kind of put together what... Well, maybe not everything, but a little bit of what happened. But, I mean, he's been around Matet. Yeah. He's a known figure. Yeah, and they work in the palace. They know right. him. Right. So. Has anyone noticed the bow? You don't think that anyone is reading, and I would say Phineas and Quattro with your high insights, no one seems to be clocking the bow as anything significant. Mm-hmm. Um, the only person who did is Bjorn. Mm. I think you told him. Uh, well, how much did you tell him about the bow? Because you told him about it as a hammer before you left. So he would have known. He would have asked where the hammer was. Yeah, I probably would have told him what happened okay. with it. Yeah. 
Um, it wasn't number one priority for him, so but mm. he's aware. Okay. Um, no one else knew about the hammer except for the four of you. Also, hey, find actually, I'm sorry, keepers. Valeria did because she was in the house when you were reading the mind of that mm-hmm. guy. So she seems to be eyeing it mm-hmm. um, because actually she she knew about the hammer, but more in the sense of like oh, that's a new bow. You didn't have that. Hmm. She well. Mm. Would they have to make a wisdom save? Uh, yeah, I was just about like, to ask, like, w- what happens to people who are not in the vicinity when it changes? And, and they just heard about it. I don't think she has enough to put together that this is the same Gotcha, item. okay. Gotcha. But okay. she's definitely, like, curious where you got this weapon. Because uh-huh. that would be quite a leap to be it, like, oh, it must have been a magical <laughs> hammer that is now a bow. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, but like my, I was like more Sherlock like, Holmes over here. I was more like wondering, like, um, do they even like remember us talking about a hammer? Or oh, you know what? That is actually is a really they, good question. Both they, of them do need to make that roll. Yeah. Because I think that's what I assume how that hammer works. Um, Aldo, or sorry, Bjorn. Yeah. Uh, they don't recognize that it was a hammer. So do they think it was a bow? So they, every time we talked about it, they thought it was a bow. They remember having thought this was you guys were talking about a bow that he had a scary bow so oh, okay so now they so, so, so now they're, they're probably like that's aldo's bow they, yeah and like oh you brought it back we're good cool yeah you're right because they would have had to make that roll and it's my bow now yeah fighters keepers yeah fighters keepers fighters, hey! fighters, keepers. <laughs> fighters keepers a plus plus yes nice. um, there's wait who said it first uh, Fighters man, uh, keeper. Okay, because I was like, you get that inspo. You're gonna get that. <laughs> get that inspiration. Oh man. Stop, stop oh man. I'm fishing for it. Stop giving Jay my little jokes. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was, I'm funny I, too. You are yeah. funny. You are funny. <laughs> I'm Wait, really clever. <laughs> and and I notice like them clocking the bow. Uh, I lean over to Althea and Ivy. Hey, I forgot to ask. I, I'm sorry. I've been distracted with. Um, I'll I'll have to tell you about this guy later. Oh, here, here's a flower. Oh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm continuing to be distracted. <laughs> wow. Uh, no. I, what happened to you guys? You you went outside and we were inside and then the bow and all this. Did it do what we thought it might do for Aldo? Like, were you guys able to do anything? It did we, not. We scared the storm away. It's gone. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. That's not what happened. <laughs> Wait, did you? Did you make a joke? I did make a joke. Oh, did you wow. make a, yeah. How do you know what a joke is? I mean, and I and I I point at Phineas. Oh, oh, sweet. <laughs> what, oh no. What other horrible? I've taught things? you about humor. <laughs> <laughs> what other horrible things is she gonna learn from now? <laughs> Probably. Oh, God. Oh, at this point, Valeria pushes open the doors to uh, the throne room. This is the same place where you first had your audience with the Baron. You now notice there are two thrones in this room where there was only one before. Mm. And there are a few attendants in there. There's a lot of soldiers and guards in this room. And as you enter, you see sitting on the two thrones are Baron Wang and Margrave Sarji. And a few other people in the room, you also notice Viceroy Kamacha, who is uh, mm-hmm. Sarji's right hand. The moment you enter, uh, Sarji leaps to her feet and goes, you're alive. And I, I run up to her. She runs up to you. And I, am, I give her a hug. And she I give gives her you a flag. big hug. Yeah. And as soon as she does, you hear the viceroy go, Margrave. And she like backs up and goes, what would your mother think seeing you behave such a way? And I am like, I think she'd be very proud of you. And I'd make her a flower and give it to her. She takes the flower. and I'm glad you're not dead. Oh, my bad got you. Um, you're you're looking, alive. I'm looking on like, when did this happen? <laughs> um, and the baron stands up and says, oh, our city owes you a tremendous debt. Well, I, I know, I don't know what else to say other than thank you. No problem. Of course. Uh, no problem. You know, big problem. <laughs> yeah, big problem. <laughs> Huge. Big pro- problem. I turn and point and go, big problem. It was a big problem. And we big, solved it. Yeah. We're You're the best. welcome. You were welcome. boys. <laughs> We What's now call us, you uh, Ivy doesn't say that. This is 100% amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and we are now officially the Moist Boys. <laughs> well, I mean, you're soaking wet, so uh, that... Wait, when did that we? happen? Yeah, wait, what? You were uh, the- and then we all freeze. <laughs> <laughs> you were in the grave one. Yeah, um, but you didn't say it was raining. Yeah, like, what the It was the raining hell? during the grave one, oh, yeah. okay. But it's all souls, so it really I, dries well, out really fast. I, I press to digitate myself dry. Well, you're dry. Okay, cool. Bjorn's not dry. Chapstein's not dry. Do you want me to... Does, does everyone want to not be moist right now? I, I'd what like to be bo- dry. Okay, yeah. Press the digitation on everybody who wants it. What kind of boys are we if we're not moist? Yeah. This is a real question. 
Yeah. We can be moist We're, in our hearts. Yeah, mo- <laughs> moist they is are. on the inside. Moist there's, is on the inside. There's yeah. a puddle in all of moist our pockets. A, moist is a feeling. <laughs> so gross. But, it's an experience. Yeah. <laughs> By the nature of just human bodies, we're all moist in our hearts. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's true. I would hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, real problem. Ninety-eight percent water. So, <laughs> we are no longer moist. Um, on the outside. <laughs> I I want to thank you, and please, we will give you a reward. I, um, you all look. You've been through a lot, and it's been a long night. But meet us tomorrow in the uh, the wild house for your reward. What is the, the wild? Yeah, house? what's the wild house? Uh, Phineas, you actually remember the Wild House. It's where the researchers are. Oh, okay. Thelonious Wild was the person who warned oh. you about the Ravens. I'm definitely... I was just thinking of a house where people get down. Yeah. yeah. I was like, that sounds like a cool like, bar. Dang. <laughs> yeah. 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 To I need to get house. to a bar immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Ivy thinks this is a house that is not made out of a corpse of a tree, but maybe a live one. Maybe like we're going to go... <laughs> yeah. Ooh. <laughs> but yeah. I guess it could Althea. be if it was like the tree was alive and you like put furniture inside of a tree. Yeah, Altheus thinks that there's definitely a bar inside the wild house. Very exciting. I'm excited about this club. All right, well, I guess. <laughs> Please, you have you have the thanks of the barony. And uh, I assume, and he turns to the Margrave, and Margrave says, yes, you obviously have the thanks of Talim. Um, big thank you for saving our people. It's a joint, you know. We, of course, we, of it's course. From, the thanks are from both of us. I give her another hug. Are you, uh, what's the, what's the Status. situation? Yeah. And I'm just shaking my hands in front of me, <laughs> pointing to both of them. Uh, He's wanting to know if you're married yet. No, not until, uh, not until Dragon's Mercy in a couple of weeks. What's, what's that? And Phineas is the only one here actually who oh, knows what Dragon's well, Mercy is. You guys don't remember, I, I did that whole story. We were camping and I told you guys the whole story about Dragon's Mercy. The origin know. of it? No. I don't remember we this listening. at all. Yeah, no. Pre- oh, man. Not even a little he, he bit. Goes, it took a while he, to tell that story. You go on those rants, no, you know, I just sort Did of... you check out after, like, the first part? <sighs> that was when I made that, like, really intense flower crown. Do you remember that one? I was Yeah, remember meditating. when I was just sort of, like, burning my fingers and then blowing it out? Yeah, that was... I'm sure it was a great story. Oh, yeah. man. I think he went, ah, and then I just stopped. Listening. It's a long story. I, is that why I checked in with you guys after I finished the story? <laughs> and you guys just seemed like you didn't know anything about it, like no specific questions about the story whatsoever. We None. Like, yeah, it was a great story. Wow. Yeah, so was, good. It's all coming together now. Yeah. All due respect, Baron. All due respect. <laughs> all due respect. <laughs> but actually, what is Dragon's Mercy? It's Dra- it's Bahamut Miss. It's the winter holiday. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I wouldn't know that. No, that you wouldn't know that. Yeah, that doesn't okay. clear anything up for You'd me. only know it if someone told you the entire first story of <laughs> yeah. Dragon's Mercy. No. Our Patreon backers know the origin of Dragon's Mercy. but um, Yeah, no, I'm not from this plane, so no. I don't fucking know. Oh. <laughs> all due respect, Baron. What will be done with Aldo? We must discuss that, but... We will find out what he knows that could be useful. Could it be a warning to us? If there's any other people out there of his, but honestly, I think he must stand trial. Good. What about everyone else left in the desert? Oh, the rest of his crew. Oh, yeah. What happened to them? I mean, most of them are probably burnt by but alchemist fire. We're not sure. Yeah, that stuff's dangerous. Can't leave it around each, each other. You know, you no. want you might bump one lamp into another lamp, and mm-hmm. then all those lamps just. Yeah. Well, if if any of them are found, we'll send uh, we'll send some teams out there, and if any of them are found, we'll the also there's a fire dead? giant. There yeah, a fire the fire giant. giant. A fire giant. I don't out think there. we did anything. With no, that. I think he's still there. We know that fire giant's sister or yes. brother. Yes. Yeah. We should yeah. probably tell her. Oh, wait, oh, wait. I have a, a, a quick thing. I, I, you guys want to put our heads together and just huddle real quick? I, I want to I ask you guys a question. Uh, okay. Not you, Jabstein. Uh, s- s- Not oh, you, Jabstein. Yeah, no. <laughs> just just the four of us. So, uh, it's, sorry, Baron. Just a well, second. Well, one second. All right, I sit down cross-legged hey, so I'm about the so same height of we you. Just, we just saved a city. They're, uh-huh. very, they're very thankful for uh-huh. that. Maybe this is the time we ask about the fire giants. Oh, we just mean? mentioned the fire giants. No. I think he means, like, for freedom. For freedom. Oh, yes. Yes. Remember yes. And I get like, I get like, I puff out my chest a little bit. I'm like, yes, we have a request, Baron. Wait, aren't we still talking together? <laughs> Not I, 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 I lean back. <laughs> Wait a minute. I, I huddle back down. So, sorry, Baron. Never mind. Well, I mean, do you think they'd be offended by it? I mean, if there's a perfect time to ask this, this might be the time. Yeah, There's no. nothing like offending the city after you've just saved it. 
<laughs> I guess it will return us gonna... to normal. Maybe we wait until they give us those gifts, and then we ask. Because then we got those rewards. Yes, tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. What's your reward? Oh, they give you things. Yeah. You know how as Quattro like has a... that nice hat? Yes. They might just give you one of those. You all have a nice hat as well, but you don't wear them. <laughs> I you, wore I'm, mine on the boat. I'm yeah. definitely wearing the hat oh, you got. Good. <laughs> I'm wearing clear. my big floppy straw hat. <laughs> it's the widest yeah, brim. It's huge. It's huge. Uh, so, yeah, I guess we'll wait till tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Yes. Baron, never mind. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> please get some rest. I will see you tomorrow. All right. I give, uh, I give the Margrave another hug and i give the baron a flower <laughs> so you go up and you're like <laughs> and all the guards are like okay i mean she saved the city so we'll let her but like we're super ready to murder this person if they attack the baron should you should you give them flowers too yeah oh yeah i'm giving everyone a flower i'm <laughs> okay. very excited that, that we assuades did not. them a fair amount give, now it's a group thing yeah everyone gets a flower you're just like tossing flowers like, we didn't die <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Friday Night Quests. It's me, Mike Christensen, your host, and also your dungeon master. Thank you for listening to the episode. Uh, more episode in a moment. This was just the first half, but um, there's another half. There's another half of an episode. It's coming in scant few moments, but first I need to talk about some other stuff. Uh, one of the things I'm going to talk about is the art contest we have going on. A fan art contest. If you want to participate and potentially win some dice, listen up to this part. Uh, we are having a contest. If you can send in anything fan art e related, uh, these can be pictures and drawings or cosplay or music or poetry, spoken word slam poems or um, throw pillows, anything that kind of falls under the domain of fan art. And potentially anything that falls a little bit outside of that, go ahead and send it to us. You can tag us on social media. We are at Partial Arc and use the hashtag FNQart. You can use that hashtag on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And we are at Partial Arc on all of those accounts. Uh, so go ahead and tag us and make sure to send us something before the end of October. We will select a winner in November and the winner will receive a set of dice collected from player dice used on the show. Uh, I, I'm not going to lie. A lot of them are going to be Sweeney dice because Sweeney had the most dice. But we're going to see if we can't get, you know, a Jay die or an Amanda die or a Jeremy die. See if we can't get a little something else in there to vary it up. Uh, so go ahead and send those submissions. You only have the month of October, which we are halfway through. So don't sleep on this. This episode that you are listening to is the last episode of Act 2. Uh, this was a long one, kind of an experimental act, trying out the new format and seeing what it's capable of. Um, some things I think went really well. Other things I think I will learn from in next coming acts. Um, but we have an Entre Act next episode. And after that will be the one year anniversary of the Moist Boys campaign, which I guess is what we're calling it, uh, I guess. Uh, so we are going to have an Aftermath episode. Uh, for those who listen to Campaign 1, you know that this is basically a little Q&A session, so you can send in questions and we will answer them. Uh, we're going to record an Aftermath episode in early November. I will answer questions about the campaign so far. There may be some spoiler things that I won't be able to talk about, but feel free to send them in and I'll answer as much as I can. Uh, we're going to have a couple of guests. Some players are going to join us. Uh, Amanda and Hillary are confirmed. Uh, going to see if we can't get either Jay or Jeremy me to join us as well but we'll have a little more info as it gets a little closer so go ahead and send us questions you can send those to us at friday night quests at gmail.com friday night quests is all one word uh make sure to put aftermath somewhere in the title or uh or in the body of the email so we know it's okay to read on the air or you can send those to us on social media just use the hashtag fnq aftermath we will record the week of November 4th, so it'll go up uh, early November. So get those questions into us by November 4th at the very latest. And honestly, the sooner you can, the better. I would go ahead and send them in after next episode drops. You'll have heard all the audio up to that point, and you'll be able to ask questions accordingly. Last thing I want to do is mention our Patreon. If you are able to support us financially, that is the best way to do it. Uh, I want to give a shout out to a new Patreon backer. Thank you so much. 
Arthur Hensby, thank you for supporting the show. Uh, we really appreciate anyone who's able to come forward and give us a little bit of money to help keep the show going and make it possible. I want to remind you what we are aiming for. Right now, we are just under 150 a month. When we reach 150, that really takes a lot of the burden off of us in terms of the monthly costs of doing the show. Uh, we hit 150 and have slipped below, so I want to make sure that we are aiming for that as well. But as a reminder, if we can get all the way up to $500 a month, Jay Jones and I are going to watch the Dungeons and Dragons movie from the year 2000 starring Jeremy Irons and also Marlon Wayans is in it. And like, it's going to be a disaster of a film, but we are looking forward to it. I am anyway, uh, in my own sick way. Uh, so go ahead and anything you can do to support us to get us to that wildly unhealthy dream would be very, very helpful. Anything you do to support the show helps keep this show going and we want to make sure this show is around for years to come. We want to make sure that there is an audience and that you are able to uh, join us for some of the really cool things we have planned. So we want to thank you again for anyone who's able to donate any dollar amount to us is a huge help. Uh, if you donate at $5 a month, you get access to the bonus audio. So you have heard some recent stuff going on. We've got the rest of our early adventures series going right now, or you get to hear one of our earliest test recordings. Uh, if you only donate at $2 a month, that's how you get your name read on the show. But if you donate at $10 a month, our characters will say things that you give them to say. We've got some more of those coming, so make sure to keep your ears out for those. And that's pretty much all I've got. A lot of announcements this month, um, but we will have a new episode for you on October 28th. So until next time, kick some ass, take some names, talk to you later. Bye. As you all begin to leave the uh, palace, the servants are actually start clapping and cheering for you as you pass through the palace. Uh, Ivy, this is, I think, only the third time you've ever heard this sound, because you heard it in the tavern. But it's much louder, right? It's closer. Oh. It's just all around you, just like a bunch of <laughs> They're it. They're clapping is, for us? They're clapping for you. Oh, wow. This is very unpleasant. I'm no, 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 this is good. This is good. This My is a good thing. My hair looks extra fiery. I am, I'm giving flowers, so they have to stop they're clapping. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, I don't like this. They them. start tossing flowers at you, like <laughs> no, and I'm like throwing. <laughs> <laughs> and flowers tossing back and forth. And as you make your way out to the doors of the palace, you see three figures. Uh, one of them, a tall woman, uh, leaning against the door frame. She looks hurt. She's wearing orange, the orange of the Bay House. This I is Bree. Go up. <gasps> cure wounds. Cure wounds. Cure well, wounds. The other person standing is Clarence. And in his arms. No, don't no, don't say it. No, the, don't say it. In no. the green poncho. No, don't say it. Is Yosef. No, oh. no I go up. Kieran's, Kieran's like Yosef. And, I'm, tears are streaming down my and face. And Clarence says, "We were trying to get him to don't, you don't, to no, heal, no, no, no. but you see, like he knew before he got here that they were too late. Okay, like um, he knew, he knew what you all know. And Ivy, if you hadn't suspected it before, you certainly knew after." your brief departure from the material plane during the storm. Healing someone from the brink of death is possible with magic, but once they've crossed over, it's too late. I'm sobbing and I'm dumping all my first level spell cure wounds. I know they're not going to do anything. Okay. And actually, uh, um, having looked at some recent errata, you don't spend the spell slots. Okay. If you. you're casting them on someone who cannot receive them. Thank you. I appreciate, oh. I appreciate that. That's, a, that's from Jeremy Crawford. That's nice. Hey. Um, I, or not errata, but some rules clarification, rather. I have, uh, I, I'm like trying to hold like Ivy like back and, and it's, you know. I'm like, I am a mess. You're like putting in her like choke, trying choke to, hold? Yeah, choke hold. <laughs> no, I'm trying to like steady her and like I calm her down. I told you he needed to come with us. He needed to stay. I told you all he needed to stay with us. And you did not listen to me. And look, look at this. This happens again. Again. Remember previously in the small town, someone else. Do you remember? You prayed. Quatra, do you remember? I did. I'm like holding Ivy. Like I'm trying to like yeah. give her calming, reassuring pats and rubs. Yeah. I just kind of like pull away. And just because I um Bree's right next to him, right? yeah. I like dump all my cure wounds on her because like I don't want the same thing to happen to her. Yeah. Okay. So fair enough. You can bring her up to full pretty easily. Yeah. All right. Um, 
So that's all my first level spots are gone. And I'm okay. not very large. But so I wish I was strong enough to take him from her, but I don't think it's going to work. Like, I think I'm going to try to hold. He's very frail. You can take him. Okay, I take him. And I like, I lay him on the ground. Mm-hmm. And I cast, like I use my druid craft to make two new flowers that I put on both of his eyes. And I just sit next to him and I go, Quatra, can you pray for him? Jabstein says, well, I don't understand. Why don't you can just take him to a cleric or someone? I'm, I'm sure there are some temples no. here. No, he's no. he's gone for good. No, you- Jabstein, uh, you don't know about this because uh, after the collapse, you can't bring people back from the dead. What? The nature of death has changed, Jabstein. What? What about when you're dead? You're dead. What about the the zombies? I mean, we saw those. I, yeah, I don't know what that. that- wait, what do you mean? Oh, yeah, there were zombies. I think that was from the Grave Wind. Yeah, maybe the Grave Wind. Look, it's been 91 years. People have been trying to do this forever. I mean, no one knows or can do it. It's just not a thing anymore. I mean, I've looked up books from back then, and it's crazy how prolific that was. It was, like, everywhere. You could just go to a cleric, as you just said, or you could go to um druids and i've heard tales of people bringing people back to life trust me i know them pretty well but that doesn't happen anymore it's better this way jabstein it is not better this way when you're dead you're dead far less heroes and heroes are a blight sorry what <laughs> yeah wait, what? i point down at yosef and i go this is what being a hero gets you yes but if we but could it, bring him back it wouldn't we can't bring him back but if we you said it's better this way it's not better this way if we were able to it'd be fine and he'd be okay and he'd be here and he'd be talking in a way that we would not be able to understand a word he's saying before death was like this people were reckless like his stories they did things without thinking because they thought they could come back at any time now the consequences are real and it's good Jepstein storms out of the room and out into the plaza and you see him like lean against a column and try to get his bearings and he actually vomits onto the ground having now been told there is no way to bring the dead back Quatra how how can you think that heroes are a bad thing Yusuf was he was trying to help someone probably probably Yosef. died for I don't think that's Yosef his name is, that's right I don't think Yosef is bad but he I was think good. I think the recklessness of heroes in some ways like ourselves is not a good thing for this world. I, I stand up and I'm like, Yosef saved this entire town. He was the one who believed us when we told them about the grave run. He's the reason, and I guess you're to everyone holding one of my flowers. He's the reason all these people are here and safe and you are being so mean. It's not mean. Disrespectful. Awful. Uh, I kneel down next to Yosef and I start to pray. I would like everyone to make a history check for me. Even me? Yes, actually. Wow. Nine. (laughs) That's a one. Yeah, that makes sense. Seventeen. Eleven. Phineas, you're having this conversation. The dead don't return. Perhaps these things came from the grave wind. You've seen undead recently. Mm -hmm. You saw one attacking Narrowwalk. A spirit returned. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait a second. the, uh, The Ice Knight? Yeah. There was that ice night. I forgot about it. It seems like so long ago. Mm-hmm. And I go outside to, to talk to Jabstein. Mm-hmm. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, I know this has been a lot to take in with the time difference, <laughs> and clearly you're affected by this whole nobody comes back from death thing. I actually, I think we misspoke. Um, what you just said. Yeah, no, look, it's been a crazy... It's almost been a century. No one comes back. There was a grave wind. You're here. I'm very excited about that, if you haven't noticed. Uh, but... Listen, there was some instance recently of somebody coming back. Uh, We called it an ice night, but um, somebody's body had been embedded in ice, and their spirit, their soul, was coming back. They weren't truly alive. Like, this wasn't a guy who had died and come back again fully, but there was something there. Something I actually realized now that we hadn't really seen too much of before. I mean, I just thought it was some sort of avatar, like he was controlling it remotely. Um, I think we found that he was dead because we found his corpse in that one place. Maybe the lantern people could not get to him because of the ice. 
They, Wait, yeah. whoa, whoa, hold on a second. What do you mean, lantern people? What, what are you, what are you trying? Behind everyone, and I point behind me, and I point behind you, is an invisible person who carries all the souls. Ivy, not Ivy, uh, I don't know where you heard no, this. No, actually, there isn't like a la- lantern. Dude, people. Phineas, she's not lying. What do you mean? We saw it. When? In the grave wind. What? She just told you what? Oh, yeah, I did tell you. Yeah, you, were you listening? And Phineas just like quickly turns around. And, <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you're gonna have to elaborate a little bit more. In the grave, when you saw something, you said you saw lantern people. There um, were behind every person was like a figure with a with a lantern and sort of represented their spirit. Uh, and when, yeah, it sort of represents when you die. And when someone dies, their light. Quattro, I'd like you to make a religion check. Mm. I think you're the only one who might know about this. Mm, no, that's shit. Um, I didn't listen closely during the religion class. <laughs> not five. in that room. That's a five. <laughs> yeah, not in that room. <laughs> I walk up to you guys. Um, I've made arrangements with uh, Bree to take care of Yosef's body and put him through, like, cleaned and through the funereal mm-hmm. rites. Um, and I come up and I say... Um, that was very kind of you to do that. It's who I am. And I want to tell you that... I'm not making eye contact with him. It's possible the world is breaking again. If death is being reversed, like our ice night, and like those in the grave wind, there could be another cataclysm on its way. You know, um, last time a cataclysm happened, just saying there were a couple people... You might call them heroes that stop oh the whole God, thing. The but remember, again. heroes so, are bad and evil. Yeah, of course they are. But, you know, if there were some that stepped up and maybe tried to stop a second cataclysm, I'm just saying. Uh, I don't believe those stories. What? I think you do. There's a, I mean, I do believe them. There's a, some. I mean, there's not a lot. There's Look, some of it you got to Dude, you have blanks. a story for, like, everything. But a like good amount so of it is there's historical documents. Like, these people existed. They were real. Like, it, there's so many eyewitnesses that, that saw these stories and heard from them. Mike? Is that true? Make a history check. Okay. Oh, if there's historical documents? <laughs> 13. 13. Um, you definitely have heard, like, that these people existed. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of the things that they said they have done, like, stopped the apocalypse? No. Like, no, that didn't happen. Like, obviously it didn't. That's dumb. And Phineas is dumb for thinking it. But Phineas, you're dumb. <laughs> but like, well, I th- but I, like the fin- Kemp line existed. Prince Horace Kemp was a provable person. Mm-hmm. The other two are like, I, what you probably think is that he traveled with like eight people, mm-hmm. and they just boiled them down to two for the purposes of the story. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, I mean, these are real people. They did these things. Like, I, they're great stories, Phineas. They're not but they're stories. stories. They're Phine- not stories. Phineas, how old are you? What does that have to do with anything? Experience. I want to make an insight check on Phineas. Sure, sure. What are you intuiting? Yeah, what are you trying to find out? Um, I'm basically using this role to determine if I believe him or not. Because, like, you know, I... Like, are I've, you trying to figure out if I'm telling the truth when well, I say this? Yeah, things? I mean, because, like, Ivy doesn't have a history. Yeah. And so I need... This is the closest thing she this has This is the closest insight. thing I can do. Like, the closest mm-hmm. thing is, like, is like, I, if, like, I can look at Phineas and see... He believes this. It's real. What did you roll? I rolled a uh, unnatural 20. I think that the fact that Jabstein, a person from his story, is here, probably in your mind, Ivy, gives him a lot of, gives a lot of credence to Phineas's tales. I believe you, Phineas. Thank you. Yeah, I'm with Quattro on this one. Well, hold on. Jabstein, question. Uh, Jabstein you- sort of like turns back to you, like... He wasn't even kind of listening. He was, he was not far. But you, you met, um, you met, uh, Ho- you know your brother Horace, of course, yeah. and uh, and you met uh, his friends Sweeney and Izzy, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, the, the, there weren't. Th- there was the three of them, and they went on adventures, and they. St- oh no, uh, that just because they're real time. people doesn't mean that but they no, no, did no, all them, the things that you said they did. But that's what you did. were saying. You were saying they weren't real, and clearly this man. I didn't was say there. that. I didn't say that. Are they the mythological that. great heroes that the stories tell? My brother told a lot of stories about himself. 
Yeah, well, a lot of them were true, probably. Do you, do you see, Phineas? Someone from his time. Uh, but Jabstein went missing before all this stuff happened. At the end, he doesn't know all this oh, stuff. Oh, that's very convenient. Uh, well, mm-hmm. he traveled through time. I mean, it's very real. I didn't make that part up. Here he is, a person from 90-plus years ago. Phineas, keep your stories if they help you. But heroes do not stop apocalypses. We have to do what we can. I am no hero, but I'm with you. Moist voice. <laughs> <laughs> if that's what we're calling ourselves. <laughs> but, hold, but, okay. I'm hero not stuff leaving. Aside. Okay, great. I don't think that but, putting any type of label of hero or not on this is going to do anyone good. Most of all you, Phineas. That I ap- think it's unhealthy. But... That ap- I'm also with Quatra. I do think we need to help where and when we can within our limits. I will take that as is. <laughs> <laughs> that applause in there turned to ash for me. I don't want it. Why? I don't want this. <laughs> <laughs> I just had that feeling. Oh. <laughs> that was a weird accent for you, Quatra. Yeah. Well, just a moment. Uh, so there's... Something's caught my throat. (laughs) (laughs) Because I feel like we stumbled through that whole thing. We did, but we got it done. We could have stumbled through and died, but we didn't. We stumbled through and won. This is yet to be seen. I'm going to pull Phineas aside. Like, like, f- f- far from them. I'm going to high five <laughs> Althea. Yeah. <laughs> We're fist bump. We got him. Yeah. yeah. Fucking got him. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Bring him down a peg. Yeah. Crush him. <laughs> crush those dreams. <laughs> the practical parents. Of the, <laughs> yeah. the world is scary. Get a job in accounting. Yeah. <laughs> Phineas, I entered a new world when I met you. And there is so much that I didn't think or even imagine could exist. And I think they are being incredibly close-minded and almost selfish to think that what you're saying could not possibly have ever been true. And I do believe they ended the apocalypse after seeing the lantern people behind us. The world was different and I fear it could have been worse, and I think they stopped that from happening. And I just want to thank you for telling me about them, and I'm gonna help you to be a hero. Thanks, Ivy. Um, well, I, I don't, you know, I don't think I'm a, a hero. I think we've done some stuff that's heroic, but um, the, thanks, Th- thank you. I'm here for you, we'll show them, they'll see. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it's real, it's real stuff. And honestly, I'm a bit concerned about all this Lantern People stuff. Um, It's not exactly something that was in the stories that I know of previously, but if something's changing that big, I mean, we should probably figure out what's happening. I am scared, because Quattro did have a point that what we're doing is dangerous. And what if we die? I, I don't. Th- I don't think you'll die. I don't think I'll die. I don't think anyone's gonna die. I, I, we're, we're we're good. We're good. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. We just we just won't die then. Yeah. Well, I'll 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 protect you. And I'll protect you. Thanks. Yeah, of course. And as the four of you make your way back into the city to get some sleep, to figure out what you need to do, we'll end the adventure there. Thanks for listening to Friday Night Quests. Your heroes will return in two weeks. Ivy is played by Amanda Joy Condon. You can follow her on Twitter at Amanda Joy. That's spelled a man, duh, joy. Althea is played by Hillary Levi. You can follow her on Twitter at Hillary Levi. 
Phineas is played by Jay Jones. You can follow him on Twitter at jawesomejones and on the Wrath and Story podcast. Quatra is played by Jeremy Fox. You can follow him on Twitter at jleefox. I'm Mike Christensen, and I'm on Twitter at supergeekmike. Our theme song was composed by Kyle Fryer. He writes fantastic tracks for your D&D games, among other things, so follow him on SoundCloud for more great musical content. This episode included music by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. You can find the track listing and credits in the show notes. This episode also included ambient sound from TabletopAudio.com. Are you interested in bonus episodes of Friday Night Quests, the kind you won't hear anywhere else? How about exclusive access to our Dungeon Master Notes? You can find that and more by supporting our show at Patreon.com slash Friday Night Quests. We also have an online store. If you visit the merch link on our website, you can go to our Redbubble shop and get t-shirts, mugs, notebooks, phone cases, and so much more. If you like our show, please check out our other podcast, Wrath and Story, a hilarious RPG show set in the grimdark universe of Warhammer 40k. Jay Jones and Andrew Dickinger, along with their servo skull Daniel Fernandez, bounce from one crazy adventure to the next, hoping for fortune, glory, and decent dice rolls. If you have any questions about the show, you can email us at FridayNightQuests at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Tumblr, all at PartialArc. Thanks for listening, and until next time, play fair and have fun. Hello, we're in the Spesker, are in.